Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just jump in here for the last five minutes because I know folks have uh, uh, constraints at noon is to say thank you and uh, thank you uh, for, to Mercedes for joining us from Mexico City and other folks who have um, joined us from afar. And next time I'll do a better job of trying to ask at the beginning um, who, who's joining us from how far away. Um, I want to end with going back to what Tom back was to saying about the different ways to be involved in MAP, uh, in, with MAPs, and also the fact that so much of these gatherings are about the conversation. So uh, what we're going to do for the next GLAM, which will be our holiday GLAM, so sometime in November or December, is we'll, where we are working on trying to reproduce a little bit more of the atmosphere of when we were gathering in person. So one thing that you might have seen on the agenda that we didn't have time to do was this idea named by Courtney of a five-minute map. And so next time we'll gather for more of a happy hour and an informal map sharing. In again? You don't have to be a collector to be a part of this group. Yes, again? No, well, I just want to interject. So I had a constraint that went away from me, so I will be able to stick around afterwards. Um, okay. Uh, uh, and, you know, I, I mean, if you're game, I, I'll bet you a lot of people would stick around for five extra minutes to hear you do your five minute map. Oh, to do my, okay, well, let's see. Let me, let me yeah. finish saying what five minute maps are, and then I guess I will demonstrate. Um, so the idea, again, for December and November, whenever we do this, is to go to something a little bit more informal and that, uh, you know, maybe alternate these with more of a happy hour, kind of a holiday thing. Um, but also shift over to where people don't necessarily need to prepare extensively beforehand or even, um, uh, even load, you know, you can, you can be spontaneous. What I recall from the glams in person was that literally we would say, show up to this person's house, we'll have a few snacks. And we didn't know until we got there what maps we might see. And... Some people spent five minutes on their map and some people, people sent, spent 10 or 15. We just kind of see how many maps we had when we arrived. And there was, there was time, which can be harder when you're virtual, for more conversation. Just like Tom said, here's this map. Now everybody, now let's just talk about it. Um, so along those lines, we'll be, again, either alternating with some in, more informal glams or leaving time at the end of each one for kind of an open mic for someone to say, here's a map that interested me. Okay, now let me uh, turn off my virtual background so that you guys can then see me uh, demonstrate this. So here's my five minute map. And Hold I'm on. just gonna put this in chat. So everyone, so if you decide during the meeting that you wanna see a cool map or, or there's a map you wanna talk about, this is the equivalent to as you leave your house, you grab a map from the wall that you decide you want to show that day. So I put the link. Um, okay, so first I'm going to show you. Okay, so if you guys can see me, this is uh, a page. Can Hold you on. See it? We, we can't see your screen if you're trying to share. No, it's not on my screen. I'm oh. just showing it. Here, let me get rid of this. Here, there. I'm just holding it up to my camera. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, oh wait, I may be small. Oh, I see what's happening because I'm. It's my phone that you guys are hearing, right? Right. 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 Can you see me on the little speaker thing. The little one, yeah. Yeah, I'll show you my yeah. the screen in a minute. What I wanted to say is, I was looking at Science Magazine. I was reading it, and I saw this very cool. I saw, you know, I didn't even read the title of the article so much as I was like, wow, that's a cool map. And it now I will share my screen. Uh, okay. Share my screen. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So here's an example of informally, I'm not, you know, you don't have to collect maps to be a part of CMS, you can just, we encourage people to talk about maps that they think are cool or funny. I'm a big fan of terrible maps, 
on Twitter, which are really funny maps. So this was a map that I saw again in Science Magazine. And what caught my attention was it was a map of like the deepest places in, you know, let me see if I can click on this and make it bigger. What happened? It was a map of some of the deepest places in the ocean. And <laughs> given that I, my job, you know, what I do at my day job is to explore space and Mars, um, this kind of thing catches my attention. So when I saw, so when I saw it and went, hey, what is that super cool map of the different deepest places on this planet? I ended up learning a bit about something called the Five Deeps Expedition. And this is the only thing I'm going to show you, and I'll just tell you a little bit about why I found this interesting. So there's this. Um, uh, this uh, millionaire um, who, uh, what is his name? Valesco Vasquez, I think is his name. And he is somebody who has been, he has skied to both poles. He has um, uh, summited the seven tallest mountains on the planet. Wow. And after doing that, he decided, well, I've been to the tallest spots. I've skied to both the North Pole and the South Pole. Why don't I go? Why don't I try to go to the deepest spots in the ocean? So he built. He uh, he along with um, uh, he has a, a submersible that is called the D. Uh, here, sorry, I was having my other notes. Oh, it's called the DSV limiting factor, and it's one of only two um, commercially rated Triton submarines that can go to these deepest points in the ocean. The other one, one of the other ones that was built was by James Cameron when he was doing Titanic, and he's also been to the bottom of the Marianas Trench. Hmm. So when he said he was going to go to these places, right, like the Mole Deep, the Puerto Rican Trench, South San Sandwich Trench, Java Trench, the uh, Challenger Deep, um, uh, he there were obviously other parties that were interested in this. Uh, and one of those was uh, Jebco, I think. So then I wandered off and started finding these other websites. So Jebco is a, um, they chart the oceans and they're responsible for gathering, they're an organization that gathers all the bathymetric data, which is depth data of the ocean. And they are making an effort to make some, something called Seabed 2030. Um, and this always you know, catches my attention is that we know, the, we know more about Mars and, than we do about, we've mapped more of Mars than we had of the, have of our own ocean. Hmm. So Seabed 2030 is an attempt to um, get our oceans mapped as well as we know some other planets. So what happened is that that organization said, hey, if you are actually paying the money to make these deep dives, these five expeditions to some of the deepest parts of the ocean in this sub from the, uh, with, supported by a mothership, you know, a, 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 a seagoing ship, then take more sensors with you and, and get more data. So they actually provided people to participate in these expeditions to get more of this uh, so that they could carry more sensors, not just turn on their equipment when they got to the bottom of the Java Deep, but also to um, uh, gather data as they went from one location in the Southern o uh, Ocean to the, to the other. They didn't do all of these at the same time and also as they come and go. Uh, and so they have, so they they made it to all five of these spots. The website is the uh, is you know I put it on chat. So I saw this in a magazine. I was I I saw the map uh, in Science Magazine. It was called Race to the Bottom. Was the name of the little graphic that I showed you on the screen that motivated me to lead to read more about this thing called the five deep and um and to learn more about jebco and ocean mapping so i just wanted to share that in the spirit of five minute map i'm not an expert on this i'm not going to be able to answer a bunch of questions on this i just thought it was a cool map 
That's really cool. Uh, really very nice. Um, I wanted to make a comment about what you said. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I'm a, I'm on my iPhone. That's why I'm not sure when when I'm on and when I'm off. When we were running band meetings in people's houses, uh, we never uh, asked anybody to announce in advance what kind of a map they were bringing. Uh, the most we did uh, was if a, a host was planning to discuss a particular thing, we might, I might have mentioned that. Uh, for instance, one time I presented globes, so I, I just want to let people know it was going to be a globe presentation. I might have mentioned that Nick in his last uh, host uh, was going to talk about, um, I forget what you call those maps, uh, the pictorial maps. Uh, but as far as everybody else, um, it was the, it was a surprise to everyone, and I think that's the best way to go because there's no tension, no studying in advance from other people. If the person that's going to present his map wants to study on it because he doesn't know too much, that's fine. It's just low key, and it's, it's a and a lot of it is the social events. Um, so I think your idea, um, Nagin, uh, of uh, uh, is is a good one for the future. Thank you, Len. That is, that is kind of the goal, but but again, virtual gives us the ability to kind of do a hybrid. So um, you know, yeah. Bill having uh, being so interested in this topic and spending a lot of time preparing is fine. Right. We're also trying, but we can literally, especially if people aren't married to the idea, like because I brought this map, because I prepared, I would like to go today. Right. If we had run out of time, in fact, I was chatting with Tom that said, hey, I could do this next time. Right. That the informality well, I think that, that we had. I had, to, I had to do the same thing on our last uh, 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 virtual meeting because um, some people had great ideas, but the agenda was already fixed. And, um, so I, think and, and our, I had spent a lot of time searching out people. So. Everybody who who is presenting something should, if they feel that there's a lot to write, a lot to say about it, they they ought write it down for themselves because there's never any guarantee that you're going to be able to do it because the main thing is for people to to limit themselves to the time allotted and also to do a little practicing at home if you're not sure uh, how much you can fit in in the 10 15 minutes. Right, and thank you, Len. And a key point of that is the interaction, the chance to say, wow, I know a lot more about ocean maps than you do, Nagy, or whatever, because I happen, you know. So it was the social aspect, it was the informal. Yeah. So I will tell you that for the holiday glam, there is not going to be an agenda. It is going to be open yeah. mic, and it can be whoever has something they want to share, a funny map. You, if you have something you want to share for 20 minutes, that's fine, but we aren't going to set it up ahead of time to try to make sure that now and then <clears throat> we have a glam that allows us to talk more and do a little bit more what we would have done in person. So we can, you know, we can figure this out. We can alternate, um, but a lot, and glam is a little different than BAM in that we don't all know each other as well. We're spread out geographically. So we want to encourage participation of all different kinds. We have some super expert collectors and we have folks, you know, like myself that aren't really collectors other than, you know, souvenir tourist maps that you get at the hotel front desk, right? <laughs> and so it, you don't have to be a collector. If you see a funny map that you just want to share and you also don't have to become an expert in the map you're sharing. What I just told you about five deeps is about all the time I had, is, is all I know about it. So there's, there's room for everyone in, uh, in these gatherings. And so I'll leave it if to it's gonna be, Mike Yeah, you're right. So that, so that everyone gets If it's going to be a free form, if it's going to be a free form gathering, every once in a while, somebody will be happy to talk for the entire session. Yeah, <laughs> um, and I think that that is really a, a, a imposition on everybody else. It's just the time to tune in, and you'd still have to control it and say, you know, yeah. you know, you have X number of minutes for for your map because other people may want to talk. Yeah, and that's a good point, Lynn, that open mic doesn't mean whoever gets the mic first gets to keep it for the whole time. So uh, this is, it'll happen. You don't have to prepare. It's a natural inclination. 
<laughs> David, you might That's be why I muted. Have David, yeah, there, David. Go ahead, David. Uh, I recommend that perhaps uh, Lennon and Nagy carry this conversation on on the side yep. as the administrators of the two plans. I think you all have good ideas, but I think yep, most so of we are us about to probably close like out. To we just wanted to say, well, you know, from the furthest, we have Mercedes is from Mexico City and Steve is from the East Coast. Do we have others joining us from other locales? I'm close. I'm 200 miles away in Nevada. In Nevada. I know sometimes yeah. we've had past presidents with us. and Yeah. No. You're right. I, I do think that they're, they're are discussing our ideas in public is a good idea because it's it's transparency right. i mean to, and people uh you know i i think the more transparent we are the more people are, want to stay involved so any of that well, we also great, meeting. Us great meeting great meeting uh, uh Nagin. you did a great job and thank the, you a and reminder the of live gals um every every uh, second monday and then uh we have the october conference that that's the fall conference that obviously is more formal Thanks to uh, uh, Courtney for all she's doing to set that up. Does anyone from BAM have a date for the next BAM they'd like to share or anything? I don't think we have a date yet. No. Len, Len have, we've talked about that, um, uh, but I don't think we have a date yet. I think the next thing we have coming up is the Southern California CMS meeting um, in right. October. Right, the fall conference that Courtney's working so hard on. Again, uh, Courtney sends her greetings. Thank you, everybody. And we uh, can will I ask uh, one question and make an announcement? Please. Yeah. Oh, yes, please. Very quickly. Does anybody know if uh, Michael Jennings at Neat Line Maps is still making his offer of purchase of maps, all of the money going directly to COVID research? He, he made an offering to the club that anybody wanted to buy a group of really wonderful maps. And I know there are a couple of members who participated. He guarantees that not only the cost of the map that you're paying, as well as the shipping is covered, he will forward all of it at no cost to the COVID funding. So if that if that offering is still in place, I'd like to encourage people to participate in it. Does, does anybody know if he's still making that offer? I don't know. Okay, well, be, be aware of it. It's a wonderful, generous, generous offer from, from Michael Jennings. Thanks. Okay. Nice. I have an announcement. Thanks, oh, go ahead, I have an announcement. It's the, uh, in, in October, the Western Association of Map Libraries, W-A-M-L dot org, is having their online conference oh, cool. October 14th through 16th. It's free. So just go to W-A-M-L dot org and you can get the information there. Thank you, Louise. Again, uh, congratulations. Wonderfully innovative meeting. Look forward to the next one. Right. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Hey, Chris. You're muted. I am. Okay. How's that? Good. Good. Thank you for uh, the invitation. Great fun. Thank you for joining. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna, <laughs> you're lighting a fire under me with respect to maps. Well, the guy who lit it for me is on the still on the line here. That's ah. Steve, Steve in New York. Uh huh. <laughs> so, so I'm just spreading <laughs> the good, the good word. You want to share a map soon, Chris? <laughs> Oh, that's too frightening. I, Come on. I, I'm just a little guy compared to these luminaries on maps. Come on. You I'll know, keep, no way. I know you. I'll keep it in mind. <laughs> <laughs> I would think you would have the like the map of the ocean there, right? I, I would. I think I've even seen something like that before. Um, I can't remember where, but uh, that expedition's, you know, gotten uh, some publicity here and there. Yeah. And, there was an article the on it in the New Yorker with yeah. yeah, yes, I read exactly. it in the New Yorker about it. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's quite an undertaking he's taken. But, uh, uh, yeah, this is great. Uh, plus, it's exposing me to all these map organizations I had no idea existed out there. Yeah.
all these map uh, hobbyists and experts. So thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank Tom, you. Thank is you Tom. There, yeah. Tom, is there a list of the people that presented today? I wanted to follow up with some of these things. Well, yeah, you can go to the digital gallery and it's all there. Um, and in, in a day or two, I'm going to have all the, the, the talks up. Oh, okay. But if you, yeah, go to the gallery and, and you'll, I'll, I'll actually, hold on. I'm going to, I'll put it in the chat right now, the link to the exhibit on the gallery. Give me just a second. Oh, okay. And I'll put it right in the chat here. So this is, has all the images and, and it'll have the recordings too. You see in the chat there? Uh, I'm trying to get mm -hmm. it. Oh yeah, over on the right here. Yep. It, and Tom? Yeah. Uh, can Mr. Jake or Chris introduce himself and your connection or where he's from? I don't. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I'm Chris Jake. I live in San Francisco about oh. uh, half a block from Tom. Uh, coincidentally, we, we met about 20 years ago at a Stanford uh, Business School event, and our paths have crossed. Uh, since then, now and then, and uh, it's just coincidental that my wife and I moved to within, like I say, about half a block from Tom uh, several years ago. So Chris, I, I, Chris I, see a, <laughs> I see a little bit more of Tom than I than I Tom and Cody than I than I than I did before. So and your also, areas of interest. Yeah. Uh, my, what are your my, areas of interest? Oh well, there are far too many, really. But <laughs> a three. I, if I start thinking about maps, I think about Alaska. Wow. So uh, I've been to Alaska quite a number of times and, you know, to different parts of Alaska and have a, you know, just tourist maps, maps to get around town. But uh, I may uh, develop Chris that is, as, as a deeper interest because of meetings like this. Chris is being sh uh, sh a little bit shy. He uh, founded in San Francisco, an event called the Ocean Film Festival uh, 20 years ago or so. And then he also um, introduced me to an organization called the Dolphin Club in San Francisco. And I think at one point, you know, one time he convinced me to go swimming in the bay and it was a horrible experience for me. <laughs> and I only did it once. Of course, he does it to this day, multiple times every week. Uh, on, New Year's, on New Year's Day? I've done Alcatraz on New Year's Day several oh. times. <laughs> it's uh it's more fun than it sounds Just take my word for it thank god <laughs> uh, it's a great spot and i hope tom is still a member down there i am continue to pay my membership and think about going <laughs> i became a rower uh, uh -huh. at the dolphin oh. club yeah I enjoyed that Gentlemen, I'm going to sign off. Yep, um, me too. I uh, nice to meet fortunately you. or unfortunately uh, made it out of Carmel Valley before a mandatory evacuation, and I'm safe in San Jose right now. So, James, uh, have you been active in the the Bay Area or Bay Area Map Group? Because I yeah. don't, were you yeah. asking me? Yeah. Yes, for for as long as uh, BAM's been around, and 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 before that, of course, CMS. Yeah. I mean. Not that they're not connected, but yeah. Great. So, uh, talking about the fires, um, there's a very good site called Purple Air, and it will show you what the uh, smoke yeah. level is at thousands of spots around the world, but particularly in the Bay Area, it's very active right now, and I can monitor the level of smoke in, in San Mateo, where I live, or in South San Jose, where my Sun lives or in the East Bay where yeah. our daughter lives and it's a, it's a real-time uh, monitoring thing and it's called purple air and it's another map <laughs> yeah. and I, I was um, I, I was breathing it for five for five days and uh, apparently not any of the worst for it I'm more interested in the fire because my house is within five miles or four miles or three miles or whatever it is oh, now wow. so good luck yeah, yeah. All right, well, keep up on that. All right, All right. Tim, thank you, everyone. All right, bye bye. Good For bye. me, you guys can stick around. <laughs> I'm, I'm checking it out. Yeah. All right. Yeah.
if I can figure out how to get out here. Go ahead. Do it here in just a second. Oh, leave me.